Thank you. Anybody up there? Oh, yeah. Yay! Yeah. Um, what am I supposed to say? We're going to do, yeah. Oh, intro for Dirk. Us. Dirk. I want to thank Dirk for two years. I was supposed to do this two years ago. And uh, some plague, I don't know what the fuck they were talking about. But they, <laughs> you know, they thought of an excuse to not have me here. And so two years later, here I am. Um, we're starting with just before dawn. Anybody see it? Nice. Oh, wow. that's good. Yeah. Yeah, because if everybody does this, I say go home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I will do a QA and a afterwards, so I don't want to give away too much in the beginning. Uh, this is a DCP, which is a digital cinema package, which is exactly what you see in the movie theaters today. There's no more film. This was shot in 35 millimeter. It's an actual film. And uh, um, that's it. We'll talk afterwards. And I have tremendous goodies under that black thing there. Um, I have um, my book. I wrote a book called Day of the Living Me. You can get it there. And I have uh, Blu-rays for sale with my signature. So you made a good move coming here tonight. <laughs> All right. Enjoy the movie, and we'll be back after. That was particularly fun. We were sitting in the back of the audience, and we got to hear everybody react to that final scene. Um, Jeff, if you don't mind, could I? I know you're gonna. First? I know you're gonna ask me, who did this? <laughs> I recognized it. I could recognize it. You know, I. There's certain things that you can't find the right effect, like in uh, Blue Sunshine, the parrot. How do you get a parrot to go, Blue oh, Sunshine? So I figured, you just heard it. <laughs> so it's the same thing. How am I going to get the sound of, that I, I know what it would sound like if you had your fist down somebody's throat and you pulled it out slow? So I did it. Amazing. I mean, you probably knew that by seeing it, but I just... <laughs> Well, um, we're going to open it up to questions, but I want to know right out of the gate, where did that idea come from? The fist in the mouth to kill the killer at the end of the movie. It's just so satisfying. Well, you know, the thing is, um, when you watch these, there's a lot of movies that I can't stand because it's like they know they're in a movie. Like uh, in a crappy movie, he would trip back and conveniently there would be a, a branch it's just like this, and stab him, and he'd go. And then they'd see that he's dead with his eyes open. But that happens in movies. Mm -hmm. So it's like he knows he's in a movie, he has to fall back. Um, so I said, well, I don't do that. So like, she's 95 pounds and he's 350, right? And she has no weapons. So I went, process of elimination, like, what? She can't do this, she can't do that, she can't pick up a bowl to hit him over the head, she can't, she's not gonna suddenly know karate, which every movie, all of a sudden, everybody knows karate. And um, so, in eliminating every possible thing, this is what was left. I didn't think of the idea, I, I just eliminated everything, and then that was on the bottom of the list that didn't exist, you know, and it's like, well, it's excellent. That's, yeah. yeah. We thank you for it. Yeah. Well. Um, now, so many of you guys saw this movie for the first time. Does anybody have any questions for Jeff Liebman? I know it's always shy to get the first one, but let's see what we get. Is Come somebody, on. Somebody got pretend you're the on? second. Pretend you're the second yeah. one. Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna force you guys. Yeah. I'm just gonna pick. Is this on? Here, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Come on. I have a question back here. Yes. Hey. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Uh, 79. Okay, I was going to say, because you were in Oregon and Mount St. Uh, Helena around this. Yeah, it was yeah. right. It was, we went to the airport to scout locations up in, uh, in Washington, and we get to the airport and said, the flight is canceled because of Volcano. So I said, this has got to, it's not April Fool's Day, like a volcano? Yeah. And that's what it was. It was Mount St. Helens. So we had to wait 
like a week or two before we can go up there. And when we went up there, we went to Salem, Oregon. Uh, this is shot in a national forest outside of Salem. And it was like, it looked like it was covered with snow. Ash. It was the ash. Yeah. It was like, because my DP, Joel King, goes, man, this stuff comes from the middle of the earth. You know, he's like a stoner and he's filling up these vials. And he goes, this can be worth a lot of money. I said, Joel, it would be if there wasn't 7 million tons of it every, <laughs> on the cars, <laughs> all over the streets. He goes, yeah, I guess you're right. But yeah, it was right after the Mount St. Helens. There you go. All right, who's next? Uh, the soundtrack was made by... Brad Fidel. Brad Fidel, who went on to... He did Terminator right after this. For, for, uh, Terminator. Terminator. How, how did you meet him? How did you well, he wasn't... He wasn't Brad Fidel yet. No, um, I didn't, you know, he played with Hall and Oates. He played, uh, I said, that's good enough for me. <laughs> wow. he, I don't think he ever did a movie. But he was a session guy. He yeah, records. yeah, and he went, on, he went on tour with Hall and Oates. Oh, and so I said, he's a musician, because I, when I work with them, I really, um, I can't play anything, but I have a good sense of movie scores and how to work with a composer, so I just felt, he knows what I need, and then he took the fee that he got, and he bought a synthesizer. And I, I said, I'm getting the feeling that you're not going to get any instruments in this movie. And I was right. And that's the synthesizer. He, he used that to do um, Terminator. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, who's next? Ah, he's. So um, I was wondering, how was it like to work with Mike Keelan? Because I saw him in this, and I saw him in Sleepaway Camp, and what I noticed that, is that he was very into it. Like he was a, anyone he, else. He was a serious uh, stage actor. Mm -hmm. He was in the Twilight Zone. He was one of those character actors that did hundreds of things that nobody knows his name, but he was in so many things. So I knew as soon as they said, I, when they said Mike Kellen, I didn't know who he was. And then I went, oh, that guy. Because what was that? Midnight Express. He was oh, the father yeah. in Midnight Express. He's a great actor. And he was like a method actor. So, um, yeah, it was great working with him. It was great working with George Kennedy. You know? Won an Academy Award. And uh, it was very easy. The better they are, the easier it is to work with. Um, the movie has been called an early, if not first, feminist horror. First? Movie. Yeah. Um, we've had questions from three guys. How about a lady in the audience? Is it, did uh, any of you gals see this for the first time and have a reaction that you'd like to share with Jeff? It'd be crazy if not one did. Anybody? Oh, you're smiling. You might be thinking something back there. With the, you in the glasses in the fourth row. Yeah, what was your reaction to that? Was that satisfying to see that ending or not? How the idea of the twins. Uh, you know, inbreeding. What I liked is the idea that you don't know there's two of them until the payoff. And that's halfway through the movie. So now you know it and the characters don't know it. Right? And so a savvy audience would say, ah, oh, that's going to pay off. The characters don't know it and we know it. So one's dead. Oh, yeah, but what about the other one? So it was like an easy hook. It was played by the same, a same actor. Very cool. Uh, do we have another question? Yeah. Um, I want to know, because it's filmed in 79, is this commissioned or is this an original ID? That you in I was a work for hire. I, yeah. I was hired to do it, yeah. but I did it under the condition that I could change the script. I wound up doing a page one rewrite. The original movie was called The Last Ritual. It had snakes in it. <laughs> Believe me, you don't want to see that movie. You never will. But I, I wanted to do Deliverance with a woman instead of John Voight. That's what it is. Okay. So I empowered the woman. They call it, now they have a term, the final girl. But this was before they had that term. And uh, that's basically what I did. I made a, a woman. Um, find her primal self to survive because it was done with John Voight, the same, same exact character, uh, 
Burt Reynolds was the macho guy, and uh, John Voight was the milk toast, and then he had to dig, dig down and, and to survive. So I did that. I figured it'd be much more interesting to do that with a woman. So once I knew that, I knew what I was working towards. And uh, it's pretty, I, just, I haven't seen it in a long time. It works. You, you, you didn't want to make a slasher movie at the time? You know why? Because there was no term the slasher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. Free Friday the 13th. Yeah, that, I hate that shit. I mean, I don't, I don't think I ever saw Friday the 13th, but the idea is like, oh, what a great kill. It's like, that's, that's not movie making. Like, you know, oh, she had a hatchet in the forehead. And, um, and then you see people do a lot of illogical things because they know they're in a horror movie. Where's my cat? I think I'll go outside where the ax murderer is to look for my cat. Why would you do that? Because they got a great kill that I'm going to do, you know? I mean, it's like, I don't get the audiences for that. Like, I don't know. They make a lot of money, so. Yeah. But. That's why I asked if it's commissioned or not. Yeah, but it was commissioned, but I would never do what's now called a slasher movie. Yeah, you sort of forced your personality into it. Yeah, I mean, what did they need me to, to do that? Yeah. You know, I don't say I wouldn't say anybody could do it, but anybody could do it. <laughs> but then they also came to you because of Squirm and Blue Sunshine. Yeah, well, they yeah, well, they do that because they could get the financing on, on independent movies or even bigger movies. If you get this, this, they give you a, they the producers get a list from the banks of five different directors, and then any one of them they get a gold movie. So I was on that list. But I always wondered, was I number one or number five? <laughs> you know, yeah. Going off the script, I was probably number five. Yeah. Because it was a terrible script, you know? No, you did wonders with it. Uh, yeah. We've got, we want to leave some time because Jeff's got some stuff uh, that he can sign for people. And he's got some stuff. I have, I have posters, photos, all kinds of cool shit. Yeah, so unless somebody's got one more, we're going to open up the uh, merch table. Oh, you, sir. Uh, it's just, uh, sorry if it's going to be a long answer, but... Uh, uh, how difficult was it to shoot uh, in the forest? Do you have any anecdotes? Have you seen like the whole movie in the forest? Oh, that's, I have a lot of anecdotes. <laughs> What's your best anecdote? <laughs> well, uh, I'll give you two of them. One was we're in the, literally in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you know, so there's a thing uh, called a honey wagon. You know what a honey wagon is? It's where the, it's bathrooms, okay. but it's a big trailer. So it has to be on a main road which was a good hike up a hill and a trail. port a potty Yeah, but it was, you couldn't see it. So I would ask, like, where's Deborah Benson, the lead? Oh, she's out the honey wagon. And I'm going like, I have to wait. And I realized we don't have the time for that. So I got the megaphone and I said, ladies and gentlemen, I have a new rule on this movie, pee where you be. We're in the, in the middle of the woods, male, female on the crew. You got to help me, otherwise I can't make the movie because somebody out of 35 people is going to have to go. And then, then I said, don't forget, the bear shit's in the woods. So that was number one. Number two was uh, Jamie Rose in the, in the lake in the, with the waterfall with the guys the hand, you know, so she's, and she was topless. So she said, uh, she was comfortable doing it, but she didn't want anybody outside the crew seeing that, and I don't blame her. So we went to the forest ranger, the head guy, and we said, we're going to be shooting this scene, and she's going to be nude. So, because they had, it was a public park, and they had a walkway all the way so you could look down at the, the lake. So I said, can you cord it off for that just a half a day and the day we're shooting? He goes to his church on Sunday and tells everybody. <laughs> it's human nature. So we're doing the thing, and, I, and she's out in the water, and it's freezing. I look up, and I go, oh, shit, there's like 100 people, all with their binoculars and their cameras. And I said, if she looks up, we can't shoot the scene. She's going to just freak out. 
So I kept saying, oh, look at that, a fish. Oh, look. I just kept her looking down so she wouldn't notice there were all these people. So that's two, but there's a lot of them. Yeah. All right, you guys, join us in the front here and buy some stuff from Jeff. He's going to sign stuff for you, too. Thanks for coming out tonight. Yeah, thank Woo. you. Voila. Look at all this shit. Oh, this is just before dawn. <laughs>